concern right now, but the city of Chicago recently had a downgraded bond rating. Moody by yeah, Moody. By Moody, mm -hmm. okay. So that means that the city, which is in the process of borrowing $1.1 billion, okay, the city mm -hmm. council just approved that. Now they're paying, it, in order to secure that money, that, that that loan essentially, they're paying a higher, the city is paying a higher interest rate. Mm. So it, at some point, those bond houses, the people le lending money to the city mm. are going to eventually want to get their money back. Right. So that's going to be, you know, it's, it's easy to borrow money. Sounds like old Al Capone days. Yeah, well, wh whatever, but it's, it's a very difficult situation. And right now, the, the pension funds in the, in the city, the, the city, the Chicago public school system right now, they don't know if they can even make a pension payment coming up in the next few weeks. For the teachers. For the teachers, yes. So what do you think is going to happen with all this? It sounds pretty desperate. I well, mean, and... in this context, I think, again, talking to people I know that are involved with city government and interact with, with politicians, it sounds as if there's, there might be a teacher strike. Okay. But then who's the loser? The children. And if there's a teacher strike, the parents are, you know, nowadays, you know, when I was younger, maybe when you were younger, maybe our mothers didn't work, and it was uh, our fathers went to work and supported the family. Now there's a nowadays you can't do that. It's a two, you know, it's a two system uh, thing in the homes where uh, the two, ch you know, your children, yeah. your parents, both mother and father, needs to work, mm -hmm. and. Um, what is going on? Um, what is going on about that? Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's. I it's, mean, how did how? Let, let's take for example. How can uh, if there's the children have to stay at home? Who is you know? With a, sometimes these teacher strikes are pretty long. Right. It isn't just a week or two. But what about their wages? You know, who's going to watch the children when if there's no school? Well, you, you know, you talk about who's going to watch the children. Apparently in the, the, the budget cuts in the state of Illinois, there's cuts in the, for daycare, state-sponsored daycare. They're getting some cuts. So okay, then, so what do you do if the, there's no, there's no <laughs> school, the children are home, yeah. there's no daycare, how, and the parents can't, they're gonna lose their jobs, you know, by not having to stay home. You can't just leave a, a small child home alone. Yeah. What, what, and there, well, this what, is what, this this is Crisis Illinois, and this is this is why this is why Rauner is is hoping to somehow through his new agenda, which is to get the business climate better in Illinois. He hopes, in a matter of you know, he's he's only been in, in office six months. Now it's been six months of stalemate. It's not been a turnaround agenda. Whether he can even begin a turnaround agenda is another story. So will Illinois be turned around? Probably not. Will well, Rauner get some of what he wants? He'll probably get a little bit of what he wants. Madigan and Cullerton will probably get more than Rauner in a compromise. I think Illinois, there's not going to be right to work zones in Illinois. I, I'm gonna, I would bet on it. Um, will there be term limits in Illinois? No. Will there be some kind of change in workers' compensation and in the corporate tax rate? Mm -hmm. I think there and will. And in lawsuits, too, because yeah. lawsuits, people take advantage. I mean, there are people that really get hurt on the job and you know, they, they lose that's, a In tort reform, I, th I think tort reform. Yeah, tort, to, yeah, so I think tort reform, workers' compensation, yeah. corporate tax, I think that's, Rauner will get some of that, mm -hmm. okay? So there'll have to be a compromise. And then the other thing is there's going to have to be some revenue. So then there has to be probably a restoration of, of, uh, of maybe a little bit of that income tax that was uh, reduced. What about filing for bankruptcy like Detroit did? Well, that's another thing. Rauner would like to, again, he's a guy who deals with bankruptcies with businesses. Right, because he comes from a business background. Yeah. He doesn't come from a political background yeah. like all the other people, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I know New York 40 years ago or when, when Abe Beam was mayor declared bankruptcy city of New York mm -hmm. and that was 40 years ago things are different right now than you know 2015 New York came out of its bankruptcy bankruptcy strong mm -hmm. okay they but uh, they assured that the pension systems would actually have money mm -hmm. okay they assured that they had to fund pension systems on an annual basis that that came out of the New York New York City bankruptcy I don't know I don't I don't 
I don't think a bankruptcy in Illinois or a bankruptcy in Chicago will be good. I think it has to be avoided at all cost. I because, really do. Because, because. Uh, I, 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 just, I just think that uh, the conditions, the, the debt is so great uh, mm. that I, I really think that uh, it's going to hurt the overall economy. Chicago How, has a great diverse economy. Do you think it was, it happened when the Mayor Daley, I know we got, we have uh, Mayor Emanuel now. Is what what why did this all happen? Who was not watching the shop? Well, with the pension, with pen, the state pension funds, the, the they were the funds were not being put in into the pension system. They weren't and, paid. You know, if if the pension obligation was a half a million dollars, the money wasn't put in that. And year. that Governor Quinn didn't do that, or. It was Magoyevich, it was all these it other the, governors the gov before. It was the, it was the go yeah, it was it was governors before. It was governor. It was governor Bogoyevich, It was governor Quinn. Some of the Republican governors were yeah. you know were involved. The blame is all around Republicans, Democrats, legislatures, mm -hmm. governor's office. Blame is blame is all around. So is the it, question is, who can fix it right now? Right. Rauner thinks he has he can fix it. Madigan and Culler think Cullerton think they have an approach to fix it. And what about Emanuel? Well, in the city, uh, Emanuel's approach is, yeah, he's got, he's got an agenda for Chicago. His main agenda is education. And he really, I think he's very sincere if you listen, if you listen to his second inaugural speech. It was all, you know, heavily on education. He's sincere. He wants these kids to be educated. He's, he feels it in his heart. Mm -hmm. Now, how are these kids going to be educated if, if all the schools in Chicago, let's say, are not educating kids on an equal mm -hmm. basis? Well, he closed a lot of the schools too, yeah. and they've got you know the the uh, unions and the teachers unions. How they they're still talking, and that's what I guess when we were talking about the race, uh -huh. and that was the, that was the whole race about you know first of all he apologized for his <laughs> his bad uh, behavior, and he was it, warm and fuzzy, and he yeah. and he took off his suit and he wore a sweater, yeah, and he right. looked he looked like the new the new. Uh, Humane Rom, but it was interesting. You know, uh, the Garcia Emanuel yeah. thing. I think I think he had about he, so many. How many millions of dollars? He had two twenty three point six million dollars compared to uh, 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 six million for Garcia. I believe it was six million. Yes, and um, you know it's interesting. Well, I think we talked a little bit earlier before the show started. We talked about. Um, like in Europe, they get twenty six hundred every in candidate a in gets, a British election. Yeah, yeah twenty six hundred dollars. Right. They get six weeks of campaigning, and everybody's on the same plateau. And here in the United States, people buy their elections. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be qualified. I, the mo it isn't about qualification. It's about the person that has most money gets in. Well, that's why the politicians are beholden to the people who give them money. You and that, that's, that's the problem in the United States. This is bad. This yeah. is a bad thing yeah. because you're not getting quality people. You're right. getting people that can afford to run in these elections. Mm -hmm. But what, what, did, what was this thing about Emmanuel and Garcia? You feel that uh, Emmanuel, he would have won because not only, it was it more than just the money or, or was it, was well, Garcia lacking in uh, qualifications? Well, that's the, that's the way Emmanuel wanted to, Garcia, you know, he was he was pointing out that Emmanuel, that that Garcia wasn't uh, adept at handling large budgets. Okay, Garcia was a state senator, he was a, uh, a Cook County commissioner, a Chicago alderman, but he didn't manage big budgets. But really, Rahm Emanuel, until he became mayor, uh, he didn't he didn't uh, manage big budgets either. So I think that was kind of a false issue. Uh, Emanuel's problem was he wasn't connecting to the average person in Chicago. Uh, it's, it's interesting to break down who voted for Emanuel. Now, Emanuel wound up getting 52.5% of the vote, basically, and, 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 and Garcia, 52.7% of the vote was for Emanuel, and 47.3% uh, was for Garcia. Mm -hmm. Okay, roughly 53 53-47. This was on the second. On the second tour, on Manuel second only tour. got four. He only got forty-five percent of the vote. There were there were five candidates in, yeah. in, in the primary. Right. Now, who voted for Emmanuel? It's very interesting. So let's look at the voters younger than thirty. Okay, and Garcia wound up getting fifty-seven of those fifty-seven percent of the votes of younger people mm -hmm. under thirty. Fifty-seven percent of those voters went for Garcia. Now, those voters voters thirty to 
to 40 years of age, it was Emmanuel with 57 mm -hmm. percent and Garcia with 43. So he had the younger voters. The younger voters, and listen to and the old, about, listen they, to the old, listen yeah. to the older voters, yeah. older than 40. Yeah. Emmanuel got 62 percent. And Garcia got 38%. I see. Okay. And what about the uh, Hispanic vote? Okay, now Garcia did very well in the Hispanic vote. He's a Hispanic mm -hmm. politician. Everybody was proud of that. Mm -hmm. He wound up getting 65% of the Hispanic vote to 35% for Emmanuel. When it came time for the white vote, Emmanuel got 64% and Emmanuel got 36%. And the difference was the African American community, okay, voted. For, for the most part, Emmanuel. The, Afri the African American community supported Emmanuel by 57%. And it's interesting because he closed their schools. <laughs> you know, So it seems like it should have been the opposite because they were upset that's where most of the school closings were. Yeah, and Chuy, Gar Chuy Garcia could not put together the coalition that Harold Washington put together mm -hmm. where you had 99% of the African American vote voting for mm -hmm. Harold Washington with 80% of the Hispanic vote voting for Harold Washington. You couldn't, he couldn't put that together. And uh, Garcia, you know, Garcia, he failed because he just couldn't, the excitement wasn't there for the Garcia mm -hmm. campaign. I think if it was um, uh, Karen, um, Karen Lewis. Lewis, Karen Lewis would have had a different, I think, outcome. Possibly. 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 Because, you know, she was, uh, uh, you know, she was with the Chicago Public Schools. Yeah. She was, you know, a very big advocate for the school system. She, it may have been a different outcome. Maybe, you know, maybe, she was maybe, a straight yes, shooter. No. She was a straight shooter. She would shoot from the hip. Yes. And I don't know how that would play in a general campaign. Uh, she was, you know, she's not a politician. Yeah. Okay. She's, well, Emmanuel she's, comes from, you know, uh, he was coming from the Clinton. Yeah. From, not the Clinton, but the Obama and Clinton, I think, wasn't Clinton, he? Clinton, yeah. Uh, yeah, he... Um, he wound up as the communications director um, in the Clinton White House. Right, and Obama. So he had. Well, you know, uh, we have. Our, I see. We're we're really already run, uh, we're running, running, out, running out, of out of time. Oh. Yes, our titles are coming up, <laughs> and you know, I want you to come back because Chicago politics is not going to end in 2015. <laughs> There's going to be other things that are going to come into, and I really want to welcome you back because I really need you back to really <laughs> explain to our viewers what it is because we see so many things in the newspaper but we, it, 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 nobody really understands okay. what's really happening and I think you kind of put it in perspective you're helping us understand some of these some of these things that we you know don't understand about <laughs> Chicago politics we have a lot of politics you know and we have to consume so much what's happening in mm -hmm. our federal government in the you know other people's governments right. and we really need to know what's happening in our own city of Chicago and our, t our state of Illinois.